Hi Jewish mom. So I want to tell you about two experiences which I had this week. Um, one of them was this past Sunday. I got together with a very, very dear old friend of mine. I'm a friend from like when I was single. Um, and um, so um, now, thank God, you know, both of us are married and both of us are mothers. So we're just sort of like catching up. And this particular friend, she is observant in her own way, but she's not, um, she's not orthodox. And she sort of, her life has sort of followed a more kind of classic Jewish American non-orthodox path. Uh, path. Um, so I was sort of talking about things. And so she has, you know, three kids um, and her youngest is 10. Um, and she has a, she has a very successful um, career, um, which, 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 uh, which requires very long hours and a lot of traveling. Um, and, um, so, um, uh, so we were just like catching up. She showed me pictures on her smartphone of like her kids and talking about her work and how she's in charge of this region and this region and blah, blah, blah. Um, and, um, and so then she asked me, she said, well, how, how are things with you? And I sort of told her, you know, I have, you know, busy with the kids, busy, busy with blogging a little bit. Um, and, um, and I said, I said, you know, and I'm very busy with life. You know, like this morning I had to take the baby to get a vaccination and I had to, you know, then I had some errands to run and then I had to, you know, da -da. and then I had to go shopping at the grocery store. Like life takes time. She's like, oh yeah, life takes time. But I have to say, like, I just felt like I left feeling, left that meeting. And I loved hanging out with her as a person. I really feel very, I feel great, great fondness for this person. I love feeling like really kind of like um, deflated, feeling like, you know, look at her, like, look at her, you know, she's also a mother and she's also a wife and she's also, but, in, you know, and she, but look, like, look what she did. She's had three kids and she has this, you know, career and look at me, like, what am I doing? You know, I've got like these, you know, I'm, I've got these, you know, we're the same age and, you know, I'm very, very busy now with like a baby taking him to get vaccinations and changing his diapers. Now he has a very bad case of diaper rash, and, you know, busy with life. You know, I have a daughter this morning looking for, trying to figure out her national service, going to like a national service fair, trying to give her advice. And like, I'm just very, very busy with having this size of a family. Um, and, um, and I'm just feeling like, wow, like look at her, like the, you know, you know, globe trotting, you know, successful career woman. And look at me. Look at me, look at me home, you know, taking care of a really bad case of diaper rash. Okay. Um, so, um, so then, um, the next thing that happened, um, the next experience I want to tell you about was the very next morning. Um, it was on month. So that was Sunday on Monday morning, last Monday. Um, then I went to, um, I went to an event, um, at the community center here. Something really nice here is that there's so many mothers in this community, like probably, probably like a majority of the women here are mothers of young children. Um, so, um, so they have a lot of, they have a lot of like um, events at the community center for mothers to meet each other. So, um, so they have something once every two weeks called morning of fun. Um, and this particular morning, then I had like a morning uh, for mothers um, and they had like a chocolate making workshop. Um, and, um, so, um, so I decided, you know, because, cause I'm in, cause I'm new in the neighborhood and because I really want to meet new people, um, get acclimated and like meet new, whatever, meet new people. So I'm going to be going to these, like every other week, I'm going to try and go to these fun mornings for mothers. So I went, um, and I was hanging out with the mothers, you know, and talking with this one about, you know, her two-year-old and talking with this one about, you know, what nursery school she's sending to, talking with this one about what school she's going to send to. And, you know, we have, my younger kids are the same age as, you know, their kids kids um and then i saw one then i saw one mother there a lot of maybe there are about 50 women there one woman was there and um, she looked i was looking at her i was like she looks strange or something looks a little bit off about her not off maybe different she looks very different i was like you know what's different about this woman is that she's a lot older than anyone else here this woman over there she must be you know maybe 38 maybe 39 maybe even 40 but then i was like wait but i'm 44 and then I looked around me and realized that I was a good, you know, 20 years older than a lot of those mothers there. In fact, these mothers that I was hanging out with are more sort of like my daughter's age plus a few years. It's like my daughter's in a few years, Bezrat Hashem, you know, than me. Um, and um, it's a bit of a shocker.
like realizing, you know, wait, I'm, I'm with there because I'm also a mother of young children, but I'm 44 and I'm still doing, I'm still doing the young mother thing. I'm still doing the mother of young children thing. Okay. So again, I was sort of thinking, wait, what am I doing? I'm 40 years, 44 years old. And I'm still like, you know, I'm still down there in the diaper rash league like that. So I'm still, you know, hanging out with these mothers, like comparing, you know, what do you call it? trading notes, comparing notes over, you know, what's the best gun for, two, what's the best gun for a two year old in the neighborhood. Okay. I'm still doing that. I've been doing that for 20 years. Okay. <laughs> Not 20 years, 18 years. Exactly. Okay. So, um, so again, I left it feeling so like deflated, like, what am I doing? Like feeling a little bit ridiculous. You know, I'm 44 and still doing this. So, um, so, um, so I've been thinking about this all week about those two experiences. Um, and, um, and my daughter told me a story, which I think tied it together. My daughter, um, has a teacher um who um basically my, i'm sorry my daughter I should go back to the beginning my daughter this week she went on a very amazing journey called masa shurashim a journey to our roots which is like her high school they have this incredible thing it's like a week-long journey around to israel that they take the 12th graders on um to learn about the history of the jewish people and the history of the jewish people living in israel okay um and um and israeli history and ancient israeli history um, and um, and one of her teachers said something that sort of I felt like tied my tied this all together all of these stories. She said um, she said she's talking about the Jews outside of Israel, when, like the Jews in the Galut and the Gullis, and before and before we came back to Israel. And um, and she said she said she said before there was this before there was you know, before the Jews were coming to Israel, then Jews were like yearning, 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 praying, praying, praying to, to return to Zion, to return to Jerusalem. And they just had that focus. It was like a compass that just had the focus north. It just knew where it was focused. It was focused on Israel, that dream of coming to Israel. She said, but what happens when you take that compass, which is headed, which, which shows you north, and you bring it actually to the North Pole, then the compass goes crazy. The compass is... Blah, 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 blah. I don't know. I've never been to the North Pole, but according to this teacher, this is what happens, okay? So um, she said, and that's the way it is in Israel. She said, before we were all, you know, we were the Jewish people yearning to come to Israel. Now that we're in Israel, you know, we're, everyone's fighting with one another and there's like a big balagan and this one doesn't get on with this one. This kind of religious doesn't get on with this kind of religious and that kind of religious doesn't get on with this kind of religious. And certainly this kind of Jew doesn't get along with that kind of Jew or that kind of Jew or that kind of Jew or that kind of Jew, you know? And, um, and like we have become like, my gosh, we're like the compass. We're here. We're at the North Pole. We got here. We got to what we were yearning for. And then we're going crazy around and around and around and around. Okay. Um, and I felt like that's this. That's this. That's this feeling of, you know, all these years, how I yearned to be here, how I yearned, you know, how like when I was, you know, 20 something, 21 years ago, how I yearned to be married, how I yearned, you know, to have a home, how I yearned to have children, how I yearned to be a mother of a large family, how I yearned for all of this. And now I have it. I'm living the dream. I got here. I'm at the North Pole and I'm going like this. It's similar to something that Rabbi Yemima Mizrahi often says. She says, she says, she says, you know, you look at you look at women who are yearning for something. A woman who's who's who a woman for like for years and years and years who was an older single and was waiting to get married. And for years, you know, she was going to Daven at the Kotel 40 days in a row, and she was saying Kirk Shira 40 times, and she was going to Uman every year, and she was this and this, this, and she was just like on fire and very like a so clear where she was like that compass north. I want to get married. She said, then you see them after the marriage, after the wedding, and they look at this. Because they lose the north. It's even in Hebrew, you call it la bedet tzafon. You get confused. You lost the north. You lost it. You're going, because you got there. We're here. So, um, so um, just one last story and parting, which I've been thinking about a lot this week, is that, um, is that um, you know, so you all of you know, I think, that we, that we, that we had a house in Nachlaot, and um, and so we sold that house a year ago, um, and it turned out that we actually bought that house. We bought that house during the Intifada, which happened, I guess, 13, uh, 13 or uh, fourteen years ago now, um, and um, and it um, uh, and so basically our house. I don't know if I ever told you this, 
But our house, actually, when we moved in, it had brand new windows. Why? Because shortly before we moved in, there had been a car bomb that went off right next to our house and had shattered all of the windows and killed tragically two people. Um, and because um, we live right, we still live right next to the Shook. And so the, so the terrorist was on his way to driving the Shook and ended up, it was a, it's a long story, whatever, ended up blowing up next to what was not yet our house, but would soon become our house. Um, so just to give you like a sense, that was sort of like the political environment of, of central Jerusalem, Nachlaot, when we moved in. The prices went, the prices dropped by half. So we bought at really, really a low in the real estate market. And now over the years and things, you know, progressively have gone higher and higher and higher and higher. So that when we sold, when we sold our house, we end up selling it. It had so the, the our, our house had improved a lot. I'm sorry, our house, um, the price had gone up a lot. We sold our house for several times what we paid for it. So when I sat down, I did the calculation of how much we had earned. And I thought I did a calculation how much we'd earned per year. I realized just the money that we'd earned just by living in that house, the money that I had earned just by raising my family in that house year by year by year was far more money than I could have made by doing almost any kind of job, any kind of profession, almost any pro kind of profession that which I am qualified for, um, and even probably anything which I'm not qualified for. It was really every year making a lot of money just by living there. And I, th and I think it's true on a financial level. And also I was thinking like on a spiritual level, on an emotional level, on an everything level, what I've gotten out of these years, what I've gotten out of these years of being a mom, of just being a mom and just living and just, you know, having this family and building this family. So I want to bless all of us. You know, I think it's so easy when we're, you know, we're, we're there. Like we got, we're at the North Pole. We got here. We're married. Besides Hashem, we're all married. Or Besides Hashem should be married. If you're, if you're watching this, um, are not presently married. Besides Hashem, you should soon be married. And, but you know, like, like for, like, you know, but all of us, I think all of us are mothers and we've gotten there. We're there, we're raising our kids. We have like a home, we're here. We're raising our kids in our home. We got there, we're at the North Pole. We got there and oftentimes you can be like, this, what am I doing and why am I doing this? Is this really important? This really, am I wasting my potential? What am I doing? That's when I bless us that we should remember, remember, remember why we wanted this so much. And remember also, like, remember what I felt like when I did, like, the calculation of how much money we'd earn just by living in that house. Like, that's it. Like, look back and just realize, like, what, what we have, what we're sitting on, that we're sitting on this treasure. Like, we're sitting in the North Pole. Like, we got here. We got here. Welcome. We got here. So I bless all of us that we should feel that and remember that and treasure that and feel, feel like what a privilege it is um, and what a gift it is to be here. Well, that's all we just want to have an amazing, amazing week.